Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in this video we continue our revisits of classic Five Nights at Freddy's characters with a look at the most popular animatronic of them all, Freddy Fazbear. In previous videos we have covered Chica, Foxy and Bonnie, so remember to check those out if they take your interest, as well as letting me know which other animatronics you'd like to see appear in this series in the future. For now though, sit back, relax and let's walk down memory lane as we take a look at some key facts about Freddy and his various versions over the years. Freddy Fazbear is Fazbear Entertainment's central mascot. He carries the company's name as well as appearing on the branding for their restaurants and merchandise. Everything from Faz coins to cereal boxes. It's no wonder he's a fan favourite and the most iconic of all creator Scott Cawthon's enormous cast of characters. Like his fellow critters, Freddy has a very distinct look. He is, as the name would suggest, modelled after a bear, and so carries many bear-like features, with big pawed hands and feet, a circular muzzle, and of course those button ears. His body is a light shade of brown, and he wears a small black top hat and big bow tie. On the right side of his face, if we pay close attention, we notice a human handprint, most likely belonging to a child. When Freddy isn't stalking night guards through the darkness of the diner, he looks by far the friendliest of the original four animatronics. This look extends to his original character traits, which were laid back, happy go lucky and fun loving. We can really get a sense of Freddy Fazbear's personality when listening to him sing within the Showtime band here in this excerpt from the unreleased song originally set to appear within FNAF Help Wanted. Well, let's meet the band. My name is Freddy, I'm the singer in the band. Got a hat and a big bow tie. Well, I'm a big brown bear, but don't be scared. I'm a real fun-loving guy. Despite singing in the band here, Freddy doesn't actually speak in most of the FNAF games. However, that did change with the launch of mobile AR title Special Delivery, where he was finally given a voice. Take a listen to some of his lines. I've planned something special just for you. When you wake up, just remember, friends are forever. Now would be a good time to hold your breath. It's hard to find concrete information on who exactly voices Freddy here. However, we do know that voice actor Kellen Goff did voice work for the character in Help Wanted, in addition to voicing Fredbear in Ultimate Custom Night, Molten Freddy in FNAF 6, and Funtime Freddy, who we'll touch on later in this video. Therefore, he seems the most likely candidate. Like the other animatronics, Freddy enters free roam mode during the night between the hours of 12 and 6am. However, unlike Bonnie, Chica and Foxy, Freddy does not seem to like standing in plain sight. He almost seems more intelligent, stalking us from the shadows. This makes spotting him much harder during gameplay as we must search for the dim glow of his eyes peeking out from the darkness. A fun fact here is that Scott did not originally plan for Freddy to have this type of movement. In FNAF 3 after completing Nightmare Mode, we unlock a newspaper containing interesting game dev comments. One of these paragraphs states, In the original game, Freddy was never originally meant to move around the diner and was only meant to get you if your time ran out. That was changed before release. While Freddy roams the pizzeria, he intermittently plays out a chilling piece of music. This creepy tune is actually based on a famous piece of classical music from the opera Carmen, a composition which translates to English as the Torador song written by George Bizet. Perhaps Scott is a fan of the opera, or at least this particular one, and so wanted to insert a little bit of culture into the Five Nights franchise. 
Interestingly, there have only ever been three animatronics who use music to proceed a jump scare. Freddy is obviously one of them, the other two being Ballora and the Puppet. Freddy Fazbear is also one of two animatronics to feature a second name, the other being Orville Elephant. During play, Freddy can game over the player in one of two ways, either by sneaking into the office if we leave the door open and stop monitoring him when he's outside, or by running out of power, at which point the pizzeria shuts down and Freddy's face ominously lights up in the doorway as his eerie theme tune cues up. One final Freddy-related easter egg can be found in the original FNAF when looking at this Celebrate poster in the security booth. If we move the mouse cursor over Freddy's nose and click on it, we hear a honking sound. A fun addition for sure. But what about the origins of Freddy? Who was he based upon and where did Scott find influence for this particular animatronic? There has been much speculation on this over the years and several sources can be cited. The first and most obvious would be Chuck E. Cheese, the star of the famous chain of restaurants under the same name. Many of the FNAF cast members seemingly take influence from these unintentionally creepy mascots, and with Chucky being the star attraction and lead singer in the band, it's pretty obvious Freddy is his variant for Fazbear's universe, especially when we look at that costume with the telltale top hat and bow tie. However, we can also look to another furry pizzeria mascot, Billy Bob from Showbiz Pizza Place, a band member, but more importantly, also a bear. The name Freddy Fazbear also has roots in another pop culture icon, it would seem, the Muppets character Fozzie Bear, whose name was based on his creator, Fazfazakus. So Freddy is a mixture of many influences as well as having his own distinct and iconic design. With Freddy now accounted for, let's move on to a quick recap of his other forms over the years and the history behind some of those designs. Now fallen into disrepair, this withered version of Freddy was the original version of the animatronic intended for the Freddy Fazbear's Pizza location. Unfortunately, he proved a bit too creepy for a family audience, but was later refurbished and so showed up in a repaired state for the original game. Toy Freddy was the revised version of the original withered form, designed to be less scary for the children visiting the pizzeria. As his name alludes, he is far more toy-like, with a glossy plastic sheen to his body and more rounded features, although those soulless black eyes are pretty horrifying. Toy Freddy is no pushover, he strides towards the office where our hapless security guard can only equip a Freddy mask in the hope this deceptively friendly looking animatronic will move on without trying to make an endo sandwich. Toy Freddy also speaks in both FNAF AR and Ultimate Custom Night. His vocals are pantomime-like and recall the sound of mascots from kids TV shows such as Barney the Dinosaur. That game was totally rigged! I've got a special present just for you! We first encountered this shiny white and purple version of Freddy while exploring Circus Baby's entertainment and rental site in FNAF Sister Location. He has a large mouth full of chunky flat teeth and carries a mini puppet version of Bonnie known as Bon Bon on his right hand. The two work as a team, with Bon Bon distracting the player and allowing for fun time to launch a surprise attack. Now unlike Freddy Fazbear, Funtime Freddy has a psychotic side and sounds positively unhinged at times. <laughs> oh well, hello again! I see you over there in the dark! Come on out! He was in part inspired by Pennywise the Clown from Stephen King's It, which quite frankly explains a lot. Creepiest of all, if we take a close look at the blueprint for Funtime Freddy, we see there is in fact a human body sitting inside its stomach. This most likely belongs to a girl called Millie, who climbed inside Funtime's stomach plate in the book Fazbear's Frights Volume 1 Into the Pit. The book alludes she did not make it out alive. 
Helpy is a super cute miniature version of Funtime Freddy. He first appeared in FNAF 6 Pizzeria Simulator, where he featured in various minigames and throughout the in-game catalogue. He also helped the player with paperwork if any lawsuits needed to be taken care of while running the pizzeria. So he's one smart cookie. Since FNAF 6, he played a small role in VR game Help Wanted, as well as being selectable in Ultimate Custom Night, where he jump scares the player using an air horn. <laughs> Molten Freddy is a mess of wires, circuits, and animatronic eyeballs. He constructed himself from the remains of Ennard and can be salvaged and brought into the pizzeria during the events of FNAF 6. If we look closely, we see what seem to be bloodstains around his mouth, a mouth filled with jagged, shark-like teeth. Eventually, Molten Freddy lives up to his name, as he is burned alongside the other animatronics during the game's true ending. A non-lethal animatronic that was first introduced in Pizzeria Simulator and just used for show purposes. We can buy Rockstar Freddy from the catalogue and place him on stage to rock out for our pizza-loving patrons. He is an amalgamation of other Freddy designs and, as always, he plays the role of singer in the band. However, one feature that does distinguish him from other Freddies is the bright gold star on his chest. Ultimate Custom Night finally gave Rockstar a voice and jump scare to boot. Please deposit five coins. You are attempting to trick Freddy. You are attempting to. <laughs> Lefty was another new addition to the series, appearing first in FNAF Pizzeria Simulator, where he terrorized the player during their night shift in the ventilation system. That is, if we chose to salvage him. He is attracted by sound, and so keeping quiet is paramount. He looks a little like Rockstar Freddy, but has a missing eye and a grey body. If we look to the blueprint for Lefty, we can learn that he was in fact designed to trap the puppet, a creepy entity first introduced in FNAF 2. Phantom Freddy has a charred appearance and is basically a burnt-up version of Golden Freddy in terms of his model. This ghoulish apparition shows up in FNAF 3 when our character begins hallucinating, entering the office and disabling the ventilation system. There isn't much else to say about this Phantom version of the famous bear. He is simply there to aid Springtrap's quest and plays a fairly minor role in the FNAF series. In case you didn't work it out from the name alone, this picture makes it very clear. Yendo is an endoskeleton bear. When compared to the regular Endo, we see quite the difference, with the other looking very humanoid in build. Yendo has a very small role in the FNAF series, appearing as an easter egg of sorts in place of Funtime Foxy during the Funtime Auditorium within Sister Location. It is very rare to encounter him here, and even more horrifying as a result. One of the scariest looking versions of Freddy is his nightmare version from Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Here, Freddy's body is mangled and shredded, and parts of his endoskeleton can be seen beneath the damage. Tiny Fredbears poke out of these holes and snap manically at their victims. Nightmare Freddy's hands are clawed and his teeth sharp and pointy. His eyes glow orange and pierce our soul. The sound his mini Freddies make was in fact taken from an abattoir and is the sound of pigs squealing out before slaughter, but remixed at a much higher pitch. Take a listen and see if you can spot it. Fredbear doesn't appear much in the FNAF games, however he does play a fairly major role in the story. He is first referenced by Phone Guy during Night 5 of FNAF 2. Uh, we're going to try to contact the original restaurant owner. Uh, I think the name of the place was Fredbear's Family Diner or something like that. It was closed for years though, I doubt we'll be able to track anybody down. We learn from FNAF 3 that Fredbear was the very first Freddy and so featured the dangerous Springlock design. This unfortunately led to the death of Crying Child in FNAF 4, after his big brother and a group of bullies shoved him inside Fredbear's mouth. 
due to the date of this game, speculated to take place in the year 1983, it is believed this event was not the Bite of 87, but rather a second Bite now known as the Bite of 83. But this is greatly debated to this day. In Ultimate Custom Night, Fredbear actually speaks when jump scaring us, however his vocals are muffled and distorted. A nightmare version of Fredbear appears during FNAF 4-2. He looks very similar to Nightmare Freddy, save for the fact his body is a dirty gold colour and his features far more exaggerated. I assure you, I am very real. Let me put you back together and take you apart all over again. Dreadbear is a play on the term Fredbear and is a hammer horror take on the design of that character. He basically looks like Frankenstein's monster, with stitches all over his body, sharp claw-like fingers, bolts through his neck, and bright glowing eye sockets. A creepy sight, to be sure. He was first introduced to the series when he appeared in FNAF Help Wanted DLC, The Curse of Dreadbear, and his minigame is quite literally set inside a mad scientist's laboratory where we must perform a deranged brain transplant. Golden Freddy is a ghostly form of the bear who has completely unknown origins. He shows up in very spooky ways throughout the various Five Nights games. In the first game, for example, if we encounter a very specific series of events after his poster appears in one of the security cameras, Golden Freddy then appears in the office and causes the screen to glitch and random images to flash up alongside bizarre audio before jump scaring the player and causing a game over. You may have noticed the jump scare noise is unique to Golden Freddy. He is one of only a few animatronics to feature a bespoke scare audio. In FNAF 2, Golden Freddy takes on a more withered guise, one in line with the other animatronics from that game. Creator Scott Cawthon doesn't even have an explanation for this mystery character himself, stating the following. Sometimes things just happen during the game making process. I can't explain Golden Freddy. Of course, theories have been made, but just like the Bite of 83, no one knows if these fanborn ideas are accurate, and it seems like Golden Freddy really is an unexplainable anomaly within the madness of this sinister world. There are other versions of Freddy we could mention, including Shadow Freddy, who makes a few brief appearances, and Ned Bear, who has a minor role in FNAF 6 and Custom Night and other designs have shown up in spin-off games and books as well as his upcoming glam rock appearance from the game Security Breach. However, for now, this seems like a good point to wrap up this particular look at the character. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror-related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.